Curb Appeal, what to do to get your home ready for the market, and is it important? What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Behind the Curtain. As always, I'm going to kick it over to Scott. Scott, what's going on, brother? What's going on, dude? Uh, I'm happy that we finally are circling around to this topic because I know we both have a little bit of a background with landscaping, um, so that might give you a little hint as to whether we think curb appeal is important, but uh, yeah, let's jump right into the conversation. Um, Pete, is curb appeal important? Well, that I'm glad you asked, fellow landscaper, ex landscaper, <laughs> Scott. So, yeah, of, absolutely. You know, curb appeal certainly is important. Um, you know, curb appeal is really the first impression uh, that someone has of your home. You know, almost always you'll see that the outside photos are what is, you know, what is the first photo in the reel of, of photos said photos like a million times there. Um, but, but yeah, absolutely. Curb appeal is important, but there are some things that you should do and some things that you shouldn't not necessarily shouldn't do, but aren't as important. And I think one of the big myths is, you know, you can't sell in the winter because not everything's in bloom and, and all that kind of stuff. So Scott, when, when I say curb appeal, like what are some of the things that you just think like absolutely must do? Yeah, so I think, you know, as we're recording this and it's dipped back into feeling a lot like winter, uh, this might be tough to picture going outside and, you know, getting out into the yard and doing some work or hiring your landscaper to come in and do some stuff. But I think at a very basic, it's like right now is the perfect time to be getting like, you know, even if you did a fall cleanup, the yard still looks beat up from a hard winter, right? And it seemed like we experienced a particularly long winter, even though we didn't get that much snow. Um, so going out and giving the yard a quick spruce up is step one. Um, and I think what we're trying to steer clear of is saying like, you know, curb appeal is not just putting like a pot of flowers on the front steps leading into the house. It's really taking a look around the whole outside of your home and looking at besides just the yard work that needs to be done. Are there like maintenance items that you could be taking care of that, um, might not necessarily like have a direct impact of like, hey, I know if I um, clean the gutters, I'll get $10,000 more for my house when I sell it. But it might be the thing that prevents you from having issues when it gets to doing like the home inspection with a buyer. Because when a buyer sees little tiny signs of lack of maintenance, it starts to get their head spinning as to what else hasn't been maintained. So I threw out the idea of like the gutters getting cleaned out. What other examples have you seen, Pete? Like stuff that people don't think of every single day, but is super important with the exterior maintenance of their home. Yeah. So I think, you know, there's like an old saying in in real estate that you, you may hear is, you know, what it looks like on the outside is probably what it looks like on the inside. Right. And that's not always true. I think, you know, I've seen homes where the outside is maybe not in the best shape. It needs some TLC, but the inside is really well maintained and actually really, really nice. But when that's the case, you may lose a couple of potential buyers because they may see the outside and just assume that it's it's not in great shape. Now, that again, that doesn't mean that it's, you know, bright spring green grass and all that kind of stuff. But some of the things that I, I would say is, you know, one thing, the first thing that comes to mind is like crushed gutters, right? The downspouts and the gutters, the, the leaders. And that is just a sign of just kind of lack of maintenance. And what I've always kind of said to clients, whether it be inside or outside of a home, it's like, and it's maybe not the best way to say it, but it's one of those things that if you don't see it, you would never think twice about it. Right. So like, you know, I know we were talking like moss on the roof, right. Is yeah. probably a good example. Like if it's just a, it's a good looking roof, it's maybe not brand new, but it, it looks like it's in good shape. Nobody's going to even question the roof. But if you do have mold on the roof, which happens, you know, people might now that gets the wheels turning in a buyer. Right. And something to always keep in mind, too, is a buyer always almost always thinks that the cost to repair or the cost to replace is like double what the actual value is. Without so now. <laughs> yeah. Right. It's like it, it never fails. So I think it's just really, um, you know, as opposed to, you know, having it listed in the spring is really just eliminating anything that would create uh, some concerns around lack of maintenance. Yeah. Um, I also was just thinking that something you did at the end of last year that I particularly thought was like a great idea because a, it, it kind of, you did it in the leading up to the winter time, but now is another great time to get out there and do it is like going around the exterior of your home and looking at the windows. Um, 
the the two things that I'll mention is like, is there any chipped or peeling paint? Um, because that could also play into whether you're getting like an FHA buyer or a VA buyer coming to the table. And we're in this market, right, where we keep saying like, oh, you know, buyers have to do all these things to stand out from the crowd with their offer. But at the same time, there is that reality that exists that like your best offer might be a VA or an FHA buyer. And there are certain criteria that those loans require, one of them being that there's not, you know, a bunch of chipping paint um, from that standpoint. So even if the buyer might ultimately end up volunteer to do that on their expense, it, it's one thing that you could take care of that would eliminate that need at all. Um, and again, it's going to just look like you've done a great job maintaining your home. And your point, Pete, is great, is that it's not like we're being like deceitful here by patching something up. But if you go out and take care of it, and whether it's the crushed gutter that gets replaced or whether it's going up and cleaning the, you know, small little baby tree uh, saplings that are growing out of your um, out of your roof and out of your gutters, like it, even if you did it this week and then next week your house was on the market, I don't see it. I never knew it ever was a thing. And it's just from a maintenance standpoint going to stand out as, wow, these people like really took great care of their home. It doesn't matter if you just did it a week ago. Uh, it got done. So that's, I guess, our overarching reminder here is like, it's a great time to go outside and start looking because I do think, again, while it's not necessarily a monetary thing, um, to your point though, Pete, like I think buyers do start to extrapolate like, oh, we got to take care of this. We got to take care of that. It could be as simple as them looking up at a roof that is perfectly great condition, but it does have moss on it. And so maybe in their head, the buyer says, well, I'm going to place an offer, but I know I'm going to have to replace that roof. Maybe that doesn't even have to be like done, but it's in their head now. So that's just a couple of the areas that go into my mind when I think about getting outside and taking care of the property. Uh, any others that pop out to you? No, no. I mean, I think a buyer, yeah, a buyer's going to see moss on a roof and be like, that's a hundred thousand dollar roof. And, <laughs> you know, we know that that's not the case and, and, you know, that's part of our job too, but we want to try to eliminate any kind of like things in the back of a buyer's mind that might create that. So another good thing would be loose handrails. Right. And, you know, sometimes you ever get the lockbox open, you go to open the storm door and it like flies open at you because <laughs> it's loose on the thing. And like, those are, that's just not a great first impression. You think of the curb appeal as the first impression of a home. You're going to pull up to that street. You're going to sit in the car for a minute. You're going to look around. Okay. looks good. And as long as it looks good, you're not having any second thoughts. If you do have some of those other things that could be maintained, now that entire showing, it becomes a little bit more of a fine tooth comb as someone's looking through a home the initial time. Of course, we go through our inspections. We make sure everything's good. But, you know, when you're trying to field the best offers, you want to have it open to as many people as possible. Um, another tip that I would point out, too, you know, in this area here in northern New Jersey, we have a lot of trees, you know, along the curbs of, you know, our houses. Um, which look really nice, but they do lift sidewalks and they create uneven sidewalks. Homeowners insurance sometimes has an issue with that. It can just, again, there's some easy ways to fix that. Sometimes it can be a little more, you know, costly. You got to dig out the root and all that stuff, depending on how bad it is, but there's some easy fixes there. You can just kind of level it off a little bit. It doesn't always look great, but you know, you don't want to have any issues with the insurance company or you know, you want to try to have as smooth of a transaction as possible and all these little things. And these are just home maintenance tips for just a homeowner. Maybe you just bought your house a year or two ago and you're wondering like what you should do, right? Cutting back the trees and the bushes away from the house, making sure that they're trimmed up. People can walk by and you don't really want anything leaning up against the house, especially if it's tall. Uh, you know, that's how critters get in the house and, and things like that. So those are just a couple other uh, like maintenance tips that, that, you know, every homeowner should really be doing, you know, every year, every two years. Yeah. And I think that's a good point too, is that this is not just, Hey, are you getting your house ready to go on the market? Do you need curb appeal? It today was really about just talking about those maintenance items as well. And something that I also just realized is like, I don't know that we've talked about how, like, what I will say is, so we've had this conversation and it's for another episode to talk about like rising interest rates, but I don't think it's impacting the market yet in a way where we're seeing like 
prices are still rising as interest rates rise. But the one thing I will say is I feel like I'm starting to get that little bit of pressure where like buyers and sellers are starting to butt heads a little bit more over buyers are now feeling like, hey, I'm paying a premium for this house. Hey, I'm getting whacked over the head with this interest rate that a month ago was a point lower. And now you're going to tell me I can't ask for something that is legitimate as part of my home inspection. So I think, again, preparing yourself as a seller to eliminate that conversation around the home inspection as much as you can is a really smart move in this little bit of a shift that we're sensing in the market right now. So, Yeah, it just gives buyers confidence to overlook some of the smaller things that really shouldn't even be brought up. Yeah. But when it starts to become a laundry list, they start to get uncomfortable and now they start to ask for more stuff. And, you know, again, I think that first impression is super important. I mean, just remember how it looks on the outside is how it looks on the inside. Although it may not be true, that's what you're going to hear a lot of. I think those are wide, wise words to uh, wrap this week up on, right? Well, uh, let's, uh, yeah, let's wrap it up before I undo that. So <laughs> good stuff, guys. And uh, yeah, if you have questions, drop a comment in the uh, comment section. And until uh, next week. Yeah. I mean, and also if you have any, uh, any ideas, maybe something we didn't cover, um, you know, let us know what are some of the maintenance tips you guys are doing till next week.